Oh my goodness, Hester. Stop that pacing and come have something to eat. I'm just so anxious for them to come back from Jerusalem. Gaspar says they're close to finding what they've been looking for. I can't wait to hear what they found. Ah, huh. that Alfred Dicktail just found out another clue, like it is always. And we'll continue this never-ending journey. Like the last time, the time before that, and the time before that. We'll never find the one whose star we have been following the whole time. Oh, Astrid, it isn't that bad. Oh, Hester? Not that bad? It's even worse. Uh, I knew it all. <laughs> Gaspar has been studying under Melchior and Balthasar for about five years now. Do you have any idea how much we had to sacrifice for their dreams? Do you know it? Huh, if I think about all the hours, the days, the years that they have been wasting on this, it makes me sick. Missing meals over pouring out over ancient texts or prophecies. <laughs> Staring at the stars the whole night instead of going to bed. Huh, but I do know what it's like. Gaspar's been doing this for five years, and I'm not bitter about it. I'm proud of how smart and dedicated he is. Huh. You do? Do you? Tell her, Stella. Well, Hester, it's like this. Take the five years of missed meals, lonely nights, living with a distracted, exhausted, obsessed husband that you know, multiply that by four, and add two previous disappointing journeys where they were sure they had found the star that marks the birth of the one who was prophesied about in the ancient text. And you'll understand why 20 years of this has led Astrid to be bitter. What? I, what? Oh, my word! This husband of mine! What is Balthazar's bell doing in the food basket? I swear, if I didn't lay clothes out for him, he wouldn't get dressed. Oh, oh my, my goodness, what did he wear? Oh, I hope he wore a belt to Jerusalem. He can't go to Jerusalem with the out a belt. I knew I should have inspected him before he walked out the door. Here they come. I'm so excited to hear what they found in Jerusalem. Well, did you find what you... How did it go? Did you find what you were looking for? Unfortunately, no. No one in Jerusalem seems to know of a baby that could be the king of the Jews. But we did find a clue. Ha! Of course. What did I tell you guys? Of course they find another clue. That's how it always goes. You fools keep on chasing after this star. Now ask. Huh, what about Aspen? Melchior, I'm getting sick and tired of all this wandering around. I just want to go home on this never-ending journey. Well, what if I said we don't actually have a clue? We have two clues. Astrid, I want to go home. Now! <laughs> Maybe you should hear the clues before you decide. They're good ones. Do you want to know what they are? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. <laughs> well, when Herod found out what we were looking for, he questioned the scribes and the chief priests. And <coughs> they prophesied, or they talked about a prophecy about a Messiah being born in Bethlehem. And that's only four miles from here. Really? Herod is going to help find the one person that's a threat to his power? Besides, the prophecy that can be referring to something centuries from now, why do you think, what makes you think that this prophecy will help you following this star? Well, it's been in the star. You see, Jupiter went within one degree of Saturn three times in the last eight months. And then the, 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 the constellation of the lion, that's also showing its moon. Yeah, yeah, we know it's in the stars. What was the second clue? Well, while we were in Jerusalem, we met some local shepherds there, and we were asking them directions about how to get to Bethlehem. They told us some very interesting activity that happened recently. Just a few months ago, a young couple had a young baby boy. And not only that, but the birth was announced by a choir of angels. They even went and saw the baby. Gaspar, that's so exciting. 
That's right, Hester. And we're on our way right here now to see for ourselves. And hopefully within a few hours, we will be paying homage to the new king of the Jews. We talked about it, and we think we should all go together. Will you come with us? Oh, Gaspar, what will I wear? What should I do with my... What are you going to wear? <laughs> you can't go looking like that. Hey, this belt matches. Let's get this belt on you, and leave. Leave <laughs> alone, woman. You're nagging me to death. I look fine the way I am. Huh. But what about gifts to pay homage to this baby child? Do you wise men think about that? <laughs> um, not, not really. I'm sure we can come up with something. Um, let me think. I have some frankincense with us so I brought along. And I know that many people use frankincense to pay homage to God. So that should be appropriate. What about you? What about, Astrid, what about your, um, Myrrh that you've distilled. I know it's precious, but it has a lot of healing properties. Yes, I'd be willing to give something to the newborn king we have been seeking for so long. I don't have frankincense or myrrh that you two have, but Gaspar and I have more gold than we need. Gold would be good for a king, right? Yeah, yeah, I think we, we have it. So, Hester, we're bringing your gold. I've got the frankincense, and you have the and Astrid, you have the myrrh. You think that's all right? Sounds great to me. Yep. Let's pick up our stuff and get that on over. that you had asked me to carry. But then you, you came up behind me and you, and you slipped it into my hands and so no one would know. <laughs> Thanks for that. And all the other times that you made sure I ha had what I needed. I know I haven't always shown it, but I do appreciate it. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're in this together. We're partners. <laughs> you follow the star and I make sure you follow the star. Well, we should probably, we should probably get heading home. I want to go home, but I don't want to forget the joy and love and peace that we found in knowing this baby. But we do need to get back to home in other way. I had a really awful dream last night about Herod, and I don't want you to have anything to do with him. Sounds fine with me. Are you guys ready? Uh, but, wait a minute. I, I believe that I've changed in some profound ways, so I don't think I will forget this, but I have an idea, um, an idea of a symbol that will help us to remind us of this. Uh, let, let's use the lights, okay? Um, Melchior and Astrid, why don't you take this candle to represent hope? Gasper and Hester, why don't you take this candle to represent joy. Stella, you and I will take this candle to represent peace. Aren't you forgetting something? What? The most important one of all for us to take with us. Love. <laughs> 